Hi, it's Jen and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about how meditation reduces mind wandering in the brain. And research has shown that we are mind wandering about 50% of the time and we are generally less happy when we are mind wandering. There's a great article by the Smithsonian called Why Mind Wandering Can Be So Miserable According to Happiness Experts that does a great job in explaining why mind wandering makes us unhappy and I have linked it in the description below. And I'd like to just share some quick highlights and quotes from the interview. So this was an interview with Matt Killingsworth who created an app in 2010 that would ask people throughout the day what they were doing and how they were feeling. And through that data, he was able to study how mind wandering affected happiness. One of his quotes that stood out to me was when he said that neutral and negative thoughts seemed to make the participants less happy than being in the moment and pleasant thoughts made them no happier. Even when people were engaged in an activity that they said they didn't like, commuting for example, they were happier even when focused on the commute than when their minds strayed. And through the research, he was able to determine that people were unhappy because they were mind wandering, not that they were mind wandering because they were unhappy. So I thought this was really interesting because I never really realized how much mind wandering was actually a negative thing for my mood. Another quote that really stood out to me was when he said, we tend to think of suffering as being due to a circumstance or a thing that's happening, like we're physically in pain. And I think what this research points to is that oftentimes it's not actually due to the circumstance, but much more to do with the way we relate to that. A lot of us spend a lot of time trying to optimize the objective reality of our lives, but we don't spend a lot of time and effort trying to optimize where our minds go. When we are trying to change our external world to make us happy, maybe what we actually need to do is work on the internal world a bit more because according to this research it's the internal stuff that's making you unhappy not the external stuff so what is one way we can exercise our internal world and actually reduce this habit of mind wandering well as you know from the title of this video meditation so look at the neuroscience of how meditation reduces mind wandering in the brain we'll, we will be looking at a study called meditation experience is associated with differences in default mode network activity and connectivity so first, let's answer the question, what is functional connectivity? Functional connectivity is when different parts of the brain that might be spatially far apart are active at the same time. Let's look at the default mode network since this is the network that we'll be talking about today. So you can see these different areas of the brain that they're not right next to each other, but they light up at the same time. The default mode is interesting because it's the areas of the brain that light up together when we're resting or our mind is wandering and we're not really being told that we have to do anything. So it's basically our baseline. When we're at rest, our brain is in the default mode. And when we are given a task, a different network will become active and the default mode will deactivate. And the network that will become active is the central executive network. So I'll t show you a picture of the default mode network next to the um, central executive network. So you can see how these two networks are different and they're just basically the different areas of the brain that light up together when these tasks or events are happening. So two of the major areas in the default mode that this study focused on were the medial prefrontal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex. So the medial prefrontal cortex is shown on the left and the posterior cingulate cortex is on the right. So it's studying the default mode functional connectivity through looking at these areas of the default mode network and how their connectivity is related to the rest of the brain. And while the subjects were in the fMRI, there was a four part series of their fMRI experience. The first part was two minutes of resting to get the default mode just at the baseline. And then there was the three different types of meditations that they did. Uh, the first one was concentration medita meditation. So for example, concentration on the breath where you just wa like watch your breath in and watch your breath out and you're just watching your breath the whole time. The second type of meditation was loving kindness meditation, where you say things like, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I, may I live with ease. And then you say the same thing for like, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you um, live your life with ease. And it's just essentially um, supposed to garner feelings of compassion. And then the third type of meditation that was done in the fMRI was um, choiceless awareness, which I hadn't heard of before this study, but basically just being aware of what is ever, whatever is happening in the present moment and not identifying with it. So if you feel some anger coming up, instead of saying, I am angry, you say in your thought, oh, there is anger. And then um, you're prompted to just let it go, but just keeping 
just keeping aware of what's happening. So going back to the areas of the default mode I mentioned earlier, the medial prefrontal cortex, which I will refer to as the MPFC going forward, is on the left, and the DLPFC, um, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which I'll call the DLPFC moving forward, is on the right. The first thing these researchers looked at was how the activity of the MPFC and the DPLFC changed when meditating versus at baseline. Activity was measured through blood oxygen level dependence in imaging, and going forward, I will refer to this as bold signaling. They found that these two regions, which are both part of the default mode, were deactivated much more so in long-term meditators during meditation than, it, than the controls. And these controls are people who have never practiced meditation before the study. And so again, this is showing that the default mode was deactivated more in long-term meditators during meditation than in the controls during meditation. Let's look at the graph to look deeper into this relationship. C shows how the MPFC activity changed for long-term meditators when they were meditating versus when they were not. As you can see, the bold signal change is negative, meaning that when long-term meditators meditated, the MPFC became less active than when they were not meditating. Green is choiceless awareness, red is love and kindness, and blue is concentration. Still looking at graph C, on the right, we have the controls, who are people who have never meditated before this study. Their bold signal change is positive, meaning the MPFC became more active when meditating versus when they were not meditating. To summarize, since the MPFC is part of the default mode, C shows that the default mode is decreased when meditators meditated and increased when non-meditators meditated. The control subjects reported more mind wandering than the long-term meditators during the meditation. Thus, these differences in the default mode connectivity could be the neural correlates for mind wandering, showing that mind wandering is decreased in meditators during meditation and increased in controls during meditation. D does the same thing. But instead of looking at how activity in the MPFC changes from baseline to meditation, it is looking at activity in the PCC changes from baseline to meditation. It shows that meditators had decreased activity in the PCC when meditating versus when at baseline. When we look at the controls, we see there was a decrease in activity when the controls practiced choiceless awareness, but increased when they practiced loving kindness meditation and concentration meditation. Further research could be done to understand why choiceless awareness decreased activity in the PCC and controls, whereas the other two types of meditation did not. Even for choiceless awareness, however, the activity in the PCC for controls did not decrease as much during meditation for controls as it did for the long-term meditators. The PCC is also a part of the default mode, so all in all, these two graphs show that meditators deactivate regions of the default mode more than controls when they meditate meaning that through deactivating the default mode, they are better able to decrease mind wandering. Functional cognitive analysis also showed that the posterior cingulate cortex in meditators had stronger functional connectivity with two regions in the brain that are associated with self-monitoring and cognitive control, both at baseline and during meditation. These two areas are the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex and the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. We will begin by looking at the images that show functional connectivity. A shows functional connectivity between the PCC and other areas of the brain while the controls were at baseline. B shows the functional connectivity between the PCC and other areas of the brain while the long-term meditators were at baseline. We can see that more areas are lit up for the meditators than the controls at baseline. This means that the PCC has more functional connectivity to different areas of the brain, especially the prefrontal cortex in meditators than controls at baseline. C shows a specific region of the brain that has stronger functional connectivity with the PCC in meditators than controls at baseline, and that is the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, and I will call that the DACC moving forward. The DACC is a region involved with self-monitoring. The fact that there is more functional connectivity between the PCC, which is an area of the default mode, and the DACC, which is an area involved in self-monitoring in meditators, at baseline means that when meditators are resting, the areas of the brain involved in resting are still communicating with areas of the brain that relate to self-monitoring, causing them to mind wander less even when they are not meditating. D shows the functional connectivity between the PCC and the DACC using the data shown in C to represent the DACC. Again, C shows an area of the DACC that has more functional connectivity in long-term meditators than controls at baseline. Now let's look at G. 
G shows the areas of the DACC that have more functional connectivity with the PCC and long-term meditators than control while meditating. It looks like a larger region of the DACC has a stronger functional connectivity with the PCC in C than in G, which means that there is a bigger difference in the functional connectivity with the PCC and DACC at baseline than while at meditating. Thus, D shows the graph based on looking at the larger portion of the DACC as shown in C, and H shows the data you get when you look at the part of the DACC represented in image G, which is the difference between the PCC and the DACC functional connectivity between long-term meditators and controls when both groups meditated. You can see that the results in both groups are similar as they are just using slightly different data for the DACC. So as I said, the graph is showing functional connectivity z-scores. So a z-score is a numerical measurement of a value's relationship to the mean in a group of values. Positive values are values above the mean and negative values are values below the mean. D shows that meditators had an above average functional connectivity between the PCC, which is part of the default mode, and the DACC, which is part of the self-monitoring areas of the brain. So there was a higher functional connectivity between the default mode and self-monitoring, while at baseline for all meditation conditions. It also shows that the controls have below average functional connectivity between the PACC and the DACC for baseline, choiceless awareness, meditation, and concentration meditation. For controls, there was a slightly above average functional connectivity between the PCC and the DACC for the loving kindness meditations. So further research could be done to better understand why the loving kindness meditation causes more functional connectivity between the PCC and the DACC for controls while the other two types of meditations do not. E is the functional connectivity between the PCC and other areas of the brain for the controls while meditating, and F shows the connectivity between the PCC and other areas of the brain for the long-term meditators while meditating. You can see more areas are lit up in F than E, showing that the long-term meditators have more functional connectivity to areas in the prefrontal cortex than the controls. G specifically shows the areas of the DACC that had a stronger connectivity in meditators than controls during meditation contrasted with C, which shows the connectivity with the two areas at baseline. As mentioned earlier, H measured the functional connectivity between the PCC and the DACC using the part of the DACC represented in G. I shows the functional connectivity between the PCC and other areas of the brain for controls at baseline. J shows functional connectivity for the PCC and other areas of the brain for the long-term meditators at baseline. As you can see, there is more functional connectivity for the meditators at baseline than the controls. And you can see in K, one of these regions that has more functional connectivity with the PCC is the DLPFC, or the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, but I'll say DLPFC moving forward. And it's circled in red in K. Like the DACC, the DLPFC is a region of the brain associated with self-monitoring. This again, this shows that meditators have more connectivity between the default mode and self-monitoring areas, as the PCC is part of the default mode and the DLPFC is part of self-monitoring. Graph L shows the connectivity Z scores between the PCC and the regions of the left DLPFC from K, so that circle that's on the left in K, and the other graph below it, P, shows the connectivity Z scores between the PCC and the regions of the right DLPFC from K, so that circle that's on the right. You can see that the functional connectivity is positive between the PCC and both right and left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortices across all meditations, as well as the baseline for long-term meditators and negative across all meditations as well as baseline for the control subjects for both the right and left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. This connection between self-monitoring areas of the brain and the default mode network allows meditators to dampen the effects of the default mode network when they are trying to perform a certain task. The theories some researchers have is that once you become so good at dampening the default mode network, you might actually have a different version of the default mode that includes these areas of self-monitoring and control so that you're not experiencing mind wandering as much. So if we think of ADHD, for example, research has shown that in the past meditation is effective in treating ADHD to a certain extent. And research on the default mode in ADHD shows that there is a decreased connectivity between the posterior cingulate cortex and the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex in people with ADHD as compared to people without it. And this is really interesting because as we've shown in this study, 
meditation causes there to be a stronger connectivity between the posterior cingulate cortex and the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. So thus, this could be a really promising thing to research to see if these changes are happening when ADHD people perform meditation and their symptoms of ADHD decrease, if it's also associated with a strengthening in the posterior cingulate cortex and the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. So overall, it was really interesting to learn about how changes in the default mode network correlate with decreases in mind wandering and why that makes sense based off of previous research. So this video was a part of a three-part series that I did on mindfulness meditation. The first video was on attention in the brain, the second on emotional regulation, and this third one has been on mind wandering. And if you are interested, I urge you to check out the past two videos I made on this. Um, they'll be linked in the description below. And let me know if you have any questions about meditation and mindfulness. And if you have any other videos you would want me to make that are in regards to neuroscience. So if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. My channel is all about personal growth and sprinkled with a bunch of neuroscience as well. Share this video with anyone who you think it would help. All right, bye.